Hello everyone, welcome to my shop. I'm Robin and today I'm going to show you the modifications I did to my Tormach slant bed relative to the high and low speed pulleys that are supplied with the machine. Tormach is very gracious to supply uh, two different pulleys, uh, one for 3500 RPM max speed and one for 2500 and obviously if you're doing larger work the additional torque that you get from the uh, reduction by the 2500 RPM pulley is an advantage. So the changeover mechanism that's there is totally impractical. I'm not complaining for what the machine costs, uh, I'm okay with that. It was nice that they actually gave the two pulleys. But in my work, uh, I could be switching back and forth in the same day between uh, turning four inch diameter material and the next time turning quarter inch diameter material. So I need to be able to go back and forth between the high and low speed range rapidly. So this is just my take on how I accomplish that. Not necessarily the um, perfect thing, but uh, works well for me. Uh, the arrangement that Tormach has for uh, moving the uh, electrical box, swinging it out of the way to get access to the panel, to get into where the motor employees are, is nicely done. Uh, that's not really the issue. It's just the uh, way that the belt is tensioned and that the motor is moved is the issue. So um, I did what I think is a pretty simple modification. Um, it will be uh, some video will show the change over time um, and from removing that tape which holds the cabinet in place to putting it back on is about 34 seconds to change the, uh, the pulleys. So like I said I wanted it done quick. So uh, this will have some video, a lot of it will just be pictures. While I was doing this I didn't have time to uh, take videos so I just took some camera shots. So I'll be doing voiceover over some pictures of the modification, and um, it'll just have to do. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, we have a tape here for quick on and off access. I'm going to start the timer and go. In order to have this panel not be a time issue, I just put studs in here and some conforming foam, uh, sticky foam tape to, so that it doesn't rattle, uh, such that this can just be ripped off and put back on again. The four foam pads press on the cover plate and hold it tight to the, to the machine so that there's no need for any bolts. So what I've done here is I have made the plate pivot by modifying the studs back here with a, a pivot that's a wire tie that's just holding the pivot pin in place and both those back legs have those and then here in the front I've made a captive nut that is tight on both sides of the plate and also has a pivot such that I can rapidly tilt this thing for fore and aft and then I've machined the legs of the uh, motor base and put turkite pads on here so that this thing has a range of motion that is exactly the same as the difference between the two pulleys. I machined the uh, pulleys, the two pulleys supplied into a single unit uh, with them side by side so that all you have to do is slide from one to the other. This is the bottom plate of the motor mount system it stays in place on the machine and does not get modified. This is the moving plate that the motor actually bolts to and I'm milling the edge here on both edges to be able to grab it in the vise to do the slot milling. I'm milling the slot for the captive nut to be able to slide back and forth as it pivots through its range of motion. I'm making two rails out of cold rolled bar here to captivate the motor base plate flanges that have the turkite pads. Drilling three holes in each rail 
that will get counterboard for the other side for three M6 socket head screws that will hold this to the moving plate. Transferring the holes from the rails to the base plate, drilling and tapping them, clipping a one inch tooling plate in the vices to be able to clamp the motor to the plate. The motor is clamped to the plate, ready to mill. Here you can see where I've milled places to be able to glue the turkite pads on. Using Loctite 380 Black Max to glue the pads on and using a clamp block there to clamp the turkite on without distorting it. The turkite pad provides a self-lubricating situation where there won't be any fretting occurring. I chopped up the existing studs into this configuration with some cold rolled ears silver soldered onto the posts to provide the pivot action. Here are those pivoting studs mounted in the base plate that is bolted to the bottom of the machine. Here are the rear pivots with the wire ties holding the pivot pins in place and the front pivot with the captive nut in place. This is the captive nut that I made up and here you see the clamp style adjuster nut that allows me to maintain the correct gap on the plate for free slide and rotation. Here's how I modified the two pulleys to mount the small one on top of the large one. A little bolt circle action to hold the two pulleys together. Here are the pulleys mounted to the motor. So here's the completed unit. Obviously the cordless right angle drill with the socket is part of the system. I uh, hope you found this useful. Uh, if you did, please subscribe and thanks for watching.